Well, hello and welcome everybody. Randy Replay back at it again. The Minnesota Vikings have made a roster move after this last week. The Minnesota Vikings have released Avante Collins, right tackle, or left tackle rather, and have signed Kyle Sloter from the practice squad. So we go into week 11 with three quarterbacks on roster. I, uh, I assure you this is purely a depth move. And uh, Mike Zimmer is trying to light a fire under one of the butts of one of these players. Uh, one of these quarterbacks, because both of them are not playing up to his par so far this season. Um, but yeah, anyway, we have the 4-5 and five Denver Broncos and that defense coming in here against your 2-8 and eight Minnesota Vikings. Still tied with Green Bay at the bottom of the division. It's always a talking point here, and it's always... Uh, worth mentioning as we go to the league schedule not the team schedule we'll see who the Packers play today and it looks like the Green Bay Packers are off so <clears throat> they have their bye week this week and of course if we get the win here if we can seal the deal um should be able to uh Get a leg up on the Green Bay Packers. Of course, our bye week is next week, so they need to lose that game as well. But, uh, yeah, I mean, we're only a couple games behind Detroit. Two and a half, I should think. Maybe three games to get ahead. And then, of course, the Bears, to be uh, reachable again, we'd have to win out. We play them last week of the season. But, yeah, uh, Mike Zimmer did not mention who is the starting quarterback. Um, we believe he's going to go with Steven Campagna for this one and uh, see what happens. So hopefully Kyle Slaughter can get in there before season's end. This has been Randy Replay. I will see you in just a minute. Failed to mention in the pregame that Blake Letelier is back. Now we've had two night games out of the last three, so this noon game is a very, very good one here. Denver, Minnesota, Broncos, Vikings, however you want to say it. This game is coming up next. And as always, we welcome you into the confines of US Bank Stadium. Brandon Godden and Charles Davis are your TV commentators. You're stuck with Randy Replay still. No sideline analyst. Please, somebody, anybody. We'll, we'll, we'll give you stock in the team at this point. I just need somebody on the sideline to get a, a second opinion so I don't have to talk so much. And here come the Minnesota Vikings. This was just moments ago being introduced to a sold-out crowd despite having a 2-8 record. Now the Broncos travel. Well, there are Broncos fans here. But it's mainly purple and gold in the stands. So Blake Letelier is back. He is our player to watch on our side. And on the Broncos... It's going to be that man right there, Jeremy Lindsay. Last week, 14 carries, 121 touchdown. Longest of 62. It's going to be hard to contain him. Mike Zimmer walking the sideline. Devontae Booker back to return. He has 13 receptions, 337, no touchdowns. And as always, Matthew Peterson, the hype man of the special teams. And Brandon Baker approaches the ball, and boom, we are underway here in Minneapolis. Booker will take this thing down in the end zone, and we will meet the starting quarterback for the Minnesota Broncos this week, Joe Flacco. Having a pretty good season, 175 for 276, 2,068 yards, 14 touchdowns, 7 PX. So Minnesota Vikings have picked off a quarterback the last three games in a row. Hopefully get another one here. We'll see what happens. Oh, my goodness. Flacco will start out in the shotgun. Flanked by Devontae, or uh, Philip Lindsay to his right. Flacco looks right, throws right. It is to the aforementioned Lindsay, who gets brought down by Thaddeus Rozu, tackled low. He goes back to Lindsay to make sure he's okay because we're not a bad team. He just took a bad angle. And it looked worse than it really was, so Thaddeus Rozu gets the first tackle. Second play goes to Philip Lindsay. He will get the first down tackle by Justin Lewis. So for the first and 10 now, Joe Flacco in the shotgun. It's another Lindsay run. 
This time Lindsay will be brought down again by Justin Lewis. Let's go, baby. Let's go. It was across midfield for the first down. Oh my goodness. Rozu will come up to the line to meet. I do believe that is Royce Freeman. He'll get six yards on the play. I mean, the uh, the Denver Broncos are a run first team here with Flacco. They come on the blitz, and it's Tevin Fair. Tevin Fair will get his first sack in a while, fifth this season. He waves goodbye. That's his signature. So they called the blitz at the perfect time. Tevin Fair just too strong. Now, if this was a run play, it would have worked, but it was a play action. As soon as Flacco turned around, he had a Tevin Fair in his face. Did not drive him. He rolled off the legs. That's beautiful. So that will hype up the defense. They will ride the coattails of Tevin Fair's sack to this third and 14. Flacco in the pistol. And it's Drew Ward getting to him. Drew Ward. Kobe Drew Ward. Oh, my goodness. Rolled off the quarterback as well. They don't want you to drive the quarterback, and this Minnesota Vikings defensive line is stifling. Back-to-back -back sacks. And that will hype up Mike Zimmer. Drew Ward comes off the field right next to Tevin Fair, and Mike Zimmer congratulates both men. Here's the kick, or the punt, rather. Merrick will let this thing go into the end zone. And, oh my gosh. Oh my heavens. So again, a good punt. And our first drive of the game is at the one yard line. Oh wow. Wowee. So here come the Minnesota Vikings. Steven Campagna has been named the starter. Mike Zimmer wanted to keep that a secret as long as he could. And here we go. <clears throat> First play of the game, Steven Campagna comes out in the single back set. We run out of this formation more time than anybody else in the NFL. And it is Aaron Moss. Oh, my goodness. He almost broke it for a touchdown. If he would have just went to the right, but we'll take 14 yards. So a Vikings first down. First and 10 from the 14 now. Steven Campagna. In the single back, that's Sam Gable behind him. And he gets brought down. That's Callahan on the sack. Ooh, Travis Lee pushes Callahan. So he's sacked by Callahan. As soon as he turned around, nobody blocked. Travis Lee was supposed to pick up that block assignment. Campagna. Give us to Parker. He's not going to get much there. I mean, it is so hard to uh, to get anything down here in the shadow of your own goalpost, as it were. Third and 20 now. Campagna gets the snap. He throws. It'll be caught. Cole Smith, he's not going to get the first down, but he'll give Taylor Pelline a little bit more room as he's on the field to punt. <laughs> Oh my goodness, what happened? It was almost an interception by Merrick. And it's a touchdown for Sutton. No! Jalen Merrick almost had the interception. We'll go back and take a look. Sailed right over his head and he was a little confused. Thaddeus Rozu missed the tackle. And Jalen Merrick did not catch up with him. Oh my heavens. And constant struggles for this Minnesota secondary. And Merrick. Oh my heavens. I mean, if you're going to beat these guys, it's going to have to be through the air. So second and eight. Campagna under center. It's a play action. Throws and is picked off Von Miller. Or not Von Miller. Um, it looked like Von Miller before. It's Chris Harris. And I, I don't... Oh my goodness. And Steven Campagna, again, throws an interception. He's thrown one every game he has played. Ooh, 
Ooh. Big pick. Here's Lindsay, and he gets into the end zone, just walks right in. Oh my heavens. So again this season, the Minnesota Vikings turn the ball over and it turns into seven points. Well, pending the kick, I should say, but at least six. Justin Lewis will get. Oh my heavens, Joe Flacco gets sacked by Justin Lewis. That Kobe. Oh my goodness. So we have not had this many sacks in a game in a while. Justin Lewis untouched. He was spying, but he, he decided to come on the blitz. He's usually been on Philip Lindsay. And it's another touchdown by the Minnesota er, by Denver. Touchdown. Another touchdown led in by um, the Broncos. That's Noah Fant. So we are ten points away from the monsoon air mercy rule, and this is not, this is getting out of hand here. Here's the uh, extra point attempt, and it is good. So here we go. Stephen Campagna under center gets the snap. A quick throw wide open Cole Smith and Cole Smith is one of those guys that has really turned into a weapon for this team that will wake up this team that will do it oh through and it was Vaughn Miller right in his face he is out there for this third and ten gets the snap throws has a man it's caught Jesse Peterson. We haven't heard his name called in a couple games. And he gets a first down. Third down and six. Has an open man. That is Travis Lee. He will get the catch and go out of bounds at the 13. So all of a sudden, Stephen Campagna is playing good. That'll be the end of the first quarter. Third and eight. Third and eight, come fakes. And Von Miller will bring him down as he's about to throw. Oh my heavens. There's the Von Miller swim dance. So fourth and 15 now. He was just about ready to throw it. As you can see, Darian Wilson came open right there and he just gets brought down. Oh my heavens. Von Miller. So a 35 yard attempt for Brandon Baker. Make this thing 21 to 3. Brandon Baker's kick is good. And Thomas Cross! Thomas Cross gets in the fray! 15th tackle this season, and it's a sack on Joe Flacco. Third and nine. So fourth sack of the day for the Minnesota Vikings. This time it's Thomas Cross. Again. Does not drive the quarterback into the ground. He goes off the left side of Flacco. Vikings will rush. Thomas Cross again! They rush for it, they got him again, two sacks! And Kobe! <laughs> Thomas Cross again! Of course, David Arnold was right there as well. Fifth sack of the day for the Minnesota Vikings. Brandon Baker's kick is away, and it is good. It's good. He hit it. Brandon Baker. Oh, my goodness. So 51. That had room. It could have been made from 55. Third down, Flacco from the pistol. He'll get the snap. Looking over his options. Flacco. Big throw down the field. It's in her set. Wow! Wow! What in the world is Paul Fritchie doing?
I, in my days, have never seen that from a defender. Oh my goodness. Goes up and over. Why do we have Justin Lewis on Carlton Sutton? I'll never know, but he had safety help. And what a catch. We're going to take a look at what happened here. So the Vikings will rush four, five rather. Here's the battles. The battles are happening. Flacco throws this thing. Now this ball was thrown out of bounds. This thing is going out of bounds, there's no doubt about it. But Fritchie is like, I can do this. Oh my heavens, Paul Fritchie. Is that the interception of the year award? What a play by Paul Fritchie, not only to get the pass, <clears throat> get the pick rather, but stay in bounds. Look at that. That's a wide receiver. I think you should set this guy up as a wide receiver. I really do. Vikings will show blitz. Here they come. And it's a touchdown thrown by Flacco to Hamilton. Now third and ten. Throws, picked off. Another pick. And there's a touchdown. Carlton Sutton, another one. I've kind of given up at this point. This game is over by halftime. 35 to 6 now, penning the kick. And Pena leaves the pocket. Rose! Almost caught by Cole Smith. There's the end of the first half. 35 to 6. Vikings getting booze. And Mike Zimmer is just shocked and perplexed as all of us. So in a game where Von Miller has five sacks, we lose, or are losing, 35-6. to six. Here's our halftime report. As always, we'll go around the league, see what the league has for us here. In Detroit, divisional game, Dallas is losing to the Detroit Lions, who are sitting at 4-5. and five. Matthew Stafford, 113, and a touch. Of course, they came in here and demolished us. Or we went there and they demolished us. In a Carolina, Cam Newton, 116 and a touchdown. Matt Ryan, 116, 168, two touches for him. Julio Jones has one of them. And for the final game, we go into Indianapolis where the Colts are up with 33 seconds left to go. Andrew Luck, 125, a touchdown. Nick Foles, 69 yards in that one. And hello and welcome to your halftime break. We are one point away from the mercy rule. I think Mike Zimmer realizes that, uh, because I do. Excuse me. Stephen Campagna. QB rating of 31.1, the lowest of any quarterback this season. He is 12 for 27. That is 44% completion percentage. For those of you that didn't know how to do math or didn't look over here. 148 yards, no touchdowns, two picks on the day. Expect him not to play anymore. I think Mike Zimmer will call in either Smeagol or Kyle Sloter. But that's just speculation at this point. Rushing. Aaron Moss, 4 for 23. Terrence Felix 1 for 21. Everybody else has negative yardage or single digits. So keep giving the balls to your playmakers. Receiving. Travis Lee, 3 for 25. Uh, Lou Wang, 2 for 19, and Luke Slizewski, 2 for 41. Nobody cares about Black and Ringo to go to defense and look at total tackles, and it's Justin Lewis with 5, Rashid Spinks with 4. So the middle linebacker's getting it done. Brandon Baker hit a 51-yard field goal in the first half. Uh, if we take a look at the sacks, can we do that? I don't know if we could do that. Uh, two turnovers. Okay, we're going to have to go to the uh, defensive side of the ball for the Broncos. Von Miller has five sacks in this game. Chris Harris and Callahan each have one. So seven sacks against the Minnesota Vikings.
wrong, 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 uh, wrong way here. Against the Minnesota Vikings, five. So Thomas Cross, Drew Ward, Devin Farron, Justin Lewis each got back to Flacco. Thomas Cross being that twice. Um, like I said, Mike Zimmer will probably pull Stephen Campagna. You cannot justify having a, a 31.1 QB rating coming into this second half. So be on the lookout. Minnesota Vikings get the ball back one point away from the mercy rule. We need to score and make something happen. This has been Randy Replay. I will see you in just a moment. And hello and welcome. Randy McManus on the kick. Boonk. And Miric will take it out of the end zone. Bring it up to the 23. That's where the Minnesota Vikings will take over 25 yards per return. Here come the Minnesota. Okay. And there he is. Kyle Sloter is the QB now. So Kyle Sloter. You got a, a taller individual there. Tallest man on roster, I do believe. He'll start out giving the ball to Aaron Moss. Aaron Moss tries to make a man miss, but he will get the first down. Big hit laid on. And he has 33 yards on his day. 500 rushing yards this season just amassed by Aaron Moss. So a good, good uh, stat line there. Kyle Slaughter under center gets the snap. First pass as the Minnesota Viking is complete to Blake Lentelier. 20 yards and a first down. Baru. Okay. I see you, Kyle Sloter. That was a little risky pass there by Kyle Sloter. 33 Jet Bomber. Sloter out of the shotgun, gives the ball to Moss. Moss will fall ahead to the 44. Giving him four yards there. That'll bring him second and seven. So they have realized that Aaron Moss is the guy here. Single back. Kyle Sloter will hand off to Aaron Moss. Aaron Moss will get uh, two yards there. And it's third and four. Third and four, Kyle Sloter from the shotgun. On the floor. Sloter, quick pass, Luke Slazuski. And that will get a pop from the crowd that we have not heard today so far. This crowd loves Kyle Sloter. And now you know why. Kyle Sloter's a good quarterback. So Sam Gable out there for this... First and ten. See something in the defense he doesn't like. Throws. And it's an interception. Here. So fourth and ten. Kyle Slaughter in the shotgun flanked by, of course, that man, Justin Vandershaw. He's got a man. And it's caught up by Cameron Quick. Had him into the right side. Cameron Quick, 29-yard reception. As you can see on the screen, two trips into the red zone. No touchdowns. Throw Blake Letelier. No end zone, but he gets into the down to the two. Gets down to the two. Kyle Sloter. If it's not there, throw it away, Sloats. He's going to run with it. Kyle Sloater rushing touchdown. Oh, ah, ooh. Oh, wait, wait a minute. What happened? Oh, he's bent, he's deadlifting Kyle Sloater. So Kyle Sloater not going to really make a read. Nobody was open, but Kyle Slaughter decided to take it in the end zone himself. And it's Justin Lewis with a sack fumble. Scooped up by Ryan Miller. Ryan Miller will take this thing into the end zone. Come on, in the end zone. Are you fucking kidding me? What in the hell is happening here with this team? How do you fumble in the end zone, Ryan Bulo? Oh my goodness, he had it in his hands. And I, uh, I, I, uh. 
I don't know. I don't know what I'm. Uh, this team is bad. This team is garbage. Flacco shotgun. Give Lindsay. Lindsay. Missed tackles by Vikings. What else is new up to the 33? Vikings first down. And I, I'm done with this team right now. I really am done. Kareem Jackson on the interception. Throwing across your body at a man. I just don't know what the answer is here. And it's the fourth quarter. And he will be in for the touchdown. Oh my heavens. That's the mercy rule. And that's the end of the game. Um, it seems no matter what quarterback we have in there, it, it doesn't matter. As I take a sip of the uh, coffee provided to me up here in the booth, it, Kyle Slaughter came in. He's good at throwing the ball. We ended up beating them in passing yards, but oh my heavens, I don't know what to do. We gave the ball away five times, including one by Ryan Bielham in the end zone. So is Kyle Slaughter the guy? His first start this season, you could tell he's a little frustrated. He threw two interceptions. And uh, it's... I don't know. We'll take a peek. <laughs> I'm starting to lose faith in this team right now. <laughs> Excuse me. You cannot turn the ball over in the end zone, let alone... Uh, uh, let's just say it's starting to be a little frustrating. So the 6'5", Kyle Sloter. QB rating of 64.3. 22 for 33, that is 66% completion percentage. For those of you that didn't know how to do math, or didn't look over here. 253 yards, no touchdowns, those two interceptions looming greatly. Steven Campagna had a 31.1 QB rating, lowest of any QB in the league this season, in a single game. And for the Minnesota Vikings. 12 for 27, 148, no touchdowns, two picks indeed. So in a game where we had five turnovers, four interceptions, and one fumble in the end zone by Ryan Bulow. Where we're... Uh, another seven points, and this thing could have been a little bit closer. But still, I mean, this is... It's getting a little frustrating to call these games when all, you see the same mistakes and nothing gets corrected. Feel free to chime off and tell me... What do you think the issue is with this team? Yeah, it's the turnovers, but how do we correct it? The Minnesota Vikings are the only ones that know the answer to that question. Rushing, Aaron Moss, 10 for 40. He led the team in rushing yards and carries. He was the guy today. Kyle Slaughter, the next guy, was 3 for 12. That's sad, with a rushing touchdown. Sam Gable, 3 for minus 1 on that miscommunication play. Terrence Freelix, 2 for 28. Travis Parker, 2 for 4. Matthew Peterson, 1 for negative 2. And Justin Vandershoff, 1 for 6. Rushing was hard to come by in this game. Receiving, Cole Smith led the team with 7 catches, 81 yards. Darian Wilson, 6 catches, 61. Blake Latelli, 5 for 63. Luke Slazuski, 4 for 57. Travis Lee, 3 for 25. Cameron Quick, 2 for 40 on the big catch that converted that third down. Lou Wang, 2 for 19. Luis Gonzalez, 1 for 4. Aaron Moss, 1 for 4. Jesse Peterson, 1 for 18. Terrence Freelix, 1 for 22. And Travis Parker, 1 for 7. That is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 different receivers. If you're in Minnesota Vikings, nobody cares about blocking. We're going to go to defense to look at total tackles, and it's GST Lynch. With 11 tackles, also had two sacks in the game. 
Oh my goodness. Rashid Spink, seven tackles. Jeremy Lindsay, five. Aaron Nelson with five. Hey, look. Paul Fritchie and Thaddeus Rozu had four. Jalen Merrick, Drew Ward, David Arnold, Thomas Cross, Tevin Fair with three. Zachary Anderson, Scott Rethwell, Kenny Erickson, Robert Nichols with two. Aaron Nelson, sorry. Matthew Arnsdorf, Aaron Moss, Poy Trollamalu, Sam Gable, Joe Batonio, Joel Batonio, Garrett Bradbury, Darren Wilson, Luis Gonzalez, each with one. Tackles for loss, we had a plenty. Arnsdorf, Arnold, Rethwell, Lindsey, Ward, Fair, Lewis, each with one. Sacks, we got to the quarterback six times today. Thomas Cross and Justin Lewis each have two. Drew Ward and Tevin Fair each have one. One interception by Paul Fritchie and what's got to be the interception of the year, Ward. He caught that thing like a wide receiver out there on the, on the sidelines. Pass deflections, we had three. Two by Zachary Anderson, one by Scott Rethwell, almost intercepted. One forced fumble by Justin Lewis. Recovered by Ryan Bulow, and then we know what happened after that. It was just ridiculous. It really was. No block kicks, no touchdowns, no safeties for your Minnesota Vikings today. Brandon Baker hit a big one. 3 for 3, 100%. 51 yard as his long. He was 1 for 1 on extra points. Taylor Pelline had 4 punts for 206, netting 172. Now for the Broncos defense, we're going to take a look at the sacks because this was really telling in the game. Von Miller, five and a half. Nine sacks on the day. No, actually, ten, really. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. So, Von Miller, five and a, five and a half. Derek Wolf with a two. Chris Harris Jr. with one and a half. And Bryce Callahan, who left the game with an injury, with a one. Oh, my goodness. And then, it, it, this defense is not to be messed with. I mean, you have a 6'5 quarterback in Kyle Sloter, but good Lord, man. Well, that's going to do it here for all of us. Uh, Vikings go into the bye week, now 2-9 and nine on the season. I mean, at this point, do you start Kyle Sloter and just see what you have? I mean, that was a pretty good performance despite the two interceptions. Uh, they, were, they were bad interceptions, don't get me wrong. But I think he was probably one of the more accurate QBs we've seen in there uh, this uh, season. Once again, your Minnesota Vikings lose 42-16. to This has been a Randy replay. I will see you in just a moment. And hello and welcome, everybody. Back to the main screen. We are at the bye week. Week 12 of the season. Minnesota Vikings just have five games left to go. It is the Seattle Seahawks, the Detroit Lions, the Chargers, the Packers, and then we close the season out with a game at home against the Bears. Um, so 2-9, and nine, sole owners of bottom of the division. This is not where I thought the team would be here at the bye week. Losers of six games in a row and turning the ball over at least two times a game in that stretch. Um, the Green Bay Packers, of course. Oh, wow, our next game is against the number one seed. Okay, Browns are 8-2. and two. Holy goodness. Okay. <laughs> so a little bit different than what we thought would happen this season. As we take a look at the league schedule, we will take a look at who the Packers are playing. They got a pretty uh they got a pretty big game here Packers and 49ers. So it's 4:25 kickoff so an afternoon game hopefully the uh 49ers can help us out a little bit. And uh we'll see what happens. We'll be sure to update that next time and make sure that we uh figure out what's going on and shakes loose with all of that. The Bears just keep winning. The Lions won another game. They're now 5-5 five, five, 500 on the season. Must be nice. The Minnesota Vikings don't have a shot. I mean, the best we could do is 7-9 and nine if we win out, but I I don't know if that's going to happen. I mean, I'd say play play for the positioning in the draft, but we don't have a pick until the fourth round because we spent our first three picks this season and next season on linemen to help with that line right now and win, but ever since then, we've lost six games in a row, so you got to really wonder, is the collusion, is the, uh, not collusion, but is the camaraderie here against this with this team? Can these guys get along? 
If anything, we're preparing for next season. We got a couple good draft prospects on our a draft board that maybe could step in and help. Uh, one of the linemen we have is scouted to be a mid-fourth round talent. In the later parts of the draft, let's see if we can find him here. Did you take a look at some of our... Well, there's a full, there's the fullback. Miles Bryant. It's not a fourth round, it's a third round talent. He's not a lineman, he is a corner. So Miles Bryant scheduled to, or slated to go in the third round, but his official draft grade is undrafted, so this could be the diamond in the rough for the Minnesota Vikings. If he is there in the fourth round, I say you take him. Uh, you could wait to let him slide, but I don't think he's going to do it. Uh, Lamar Jackson, of course, another cornerback. I mean, and then as you look through this draft board in the fourth round, there's not too much that we have. Tyler Johnson from Minnesota. He is a five, a six-two rather, uh, wide receiver. You could take him. In the fifth round, you could get a speed rusher, left outside linebacker, Carter Coughlin. I mean, you have you have some options at number five, but I think this one will be the best um, pick for the Minnesota Vikings in this current build or state of time. Zach Shackelford from the University of Texas. He is a pass protector. Slated to go in the fifth round, but he is graded at second round talent. I think this will be... The Diamond in the Rough uh, for your Minnesota Vikings. Um, so I believe as we look ahead towards the draft, um, if he is here, you take him. You take him without a question of a doubt. He's 6'4", 305. He's 23 years old. He will be 24 at the time of the draft. But He's projected to be a mid-fifth rounder with late second round talent. I mean, what's not to like? A minus on pass block, A minus on pass block power. This is what we need to, to kind of solidify the line. Uh, Garrett Bradbury isn't what we thought he was. If anything, just for some depth here. But the Minnesota Vikings, I believe, will do a good job here. We also have Felipe Franks, a favorite of the Minnesota Vikings, fifth round talent slated to go, or fourth round talent slated to go in the fifth. And then, of course, um, how is he not added to the draft board already? Well, we're we're going to add him to the board. So, Zach Shackelford, and then Trey Smith is another one, a right tackle, 6'6, 325, slated to go in the fifth round, but he is graded as second round talent. So, Trey Smith and Zach Shackelford, if we could get both of these guys fourth and fifth round, this would be huge for the Minnesota Vikings. Now, I know everybody is going to be doing homework on these guys, and they'll probably see this as well, but these are the two guys that I believe the Minnesota Vikings should target. They are on the draft board as of right now. Um, as we take a look at the board, we will see... Oh, never mind. The draft board in its current state, they have Trey Smith as number one. Uh, Walker Little, they have up there. I don't think they're going to be able to get him because he is not going to slide. He's 6'7", 313. <gasps> uh, and then they started looking at guys that they could realistically get. Fourth round talent, J.J. Taylor. Felipe Franks, of course, is there for their fifth round pick if one of these guys fall. Um, but yeah, they do have some guys. They're going to move Zach Shackelford up to number two. So they want the 6'6", 325 Trey Smith, second round talent slated to go in the fifth round. That will be their guy. Now they have a pick in the fourth round. If they could trade up to the third, they could probably snag Trey Smith from whoever drafts him. Now we'll be sure to uh, bring you all of the draft updates as they happen. And of course, the draft board will be updated now as we look towards the end of the season. But let's not be dismayed, the Minnesota Vikings... They still have a chance to get a pretty good pick here. The fourth round, they could get an early, uh, an early pick here, and we will see what they do with all of that. <clears throat> 
And uh, we... I don't know what the answer is. <laughs> I mean, if you draft a quarterback, you'll have four quarterbacks on roster, depending on what you do here. You could probably move Smeagol or Campagna in the offseason, maybe get a couple first-rounders before the draft starts. I, I don't even know if they're worth that. Maybe a third-rounder. I don't know. Once again, this has been Randy Replay. I will see you in the next one. Your Minnesota Vikings lose at home against the Broncos, 42-16. to We reach the bye week.